everyone. Um, yeah, so it's today is, um, well, where I am, it's Sunday, March 26, 3 p.m. And this is the first meeting for the data visualization with our book club. Um, so welcome. Um, we're gonna be, this website, or we're the R4DS Online Learning Community Book Club. And this website is a companion for the book Data Visualization with R by Rob Tabakoff. And this companion is available at r4ds.io slash data vizr. And it's being, this website is being developed by the R4DS Online Learning Community. And you can follow along and join the community, um, our Slack to participate. Um, and the companion follows the R4DS Online Learning Community Code of Conduct. Okay, so for our meetings, um, each week a volunteer will present a chapter from a book or part of the part of a chapter, and yeah, it's one of the best ways to learn the material. Not only reading it, but like teaching it to other people. So presentations will usually consist of a review of the material, a discussion, and or a demonstration of the pre principles presented in that chapter. Um, for more information on how to present. Um, is available on the GitHub repo um, and presentations will be recorded and will be available on the R4DS online learning community YouTube channel. So I'm gonna go show you guys the repo first. Um, oh, do we have someone join? Hi, Tiffany. I'm just kicking off mm -hmm. the book club now. Yeah, um, okay, so yeah, so the GitHub repo, Okay, so yeah, kind of says a lot of the same things um, from the notes. And again, we're reading digital visualization with R. If I click here, I probably should have, it'll take you to the book that we'll be reading. Um, it has 13 chapters. Um, yeah, 13 chapters. Um, and just reading the welcome. R is an amazing platform for data analysis, capable of creating almost any type of graph. And this book helps you create the most popular visualizations from quick and dirty plots to publication ready graphs. Mm -hmm. And the text relies heavily on ggplot packages for graphics, but other approaches, other approaches are covered as well. So that's the book. And then back to the repo. So again, we're R for DS online learning community book club so you could join the book club on our slack it's book club data viz r i don't know if this will pull it up yeah um that link will take you to sign in to the slack or like if you already signed in or join it um and yeah that's probably takes the same thing and then this one takes you to the notes about the book which is what i was showing before Yeah, so again, this is our notes for the book. And I can just put these in the chat in case anyone wants to follow along. So that's the notes. This is the book. And then this is our repo. Oops. Okay, so for the meeting schedule, um, we'll be um, we'll be meeting Sundays at seventeen hundred CST um, CDT. So I think that's Central Standard Time, um, and we are the first first cohort. Um, and then, so again, for the presentations, um, yeah. So again, each week a volunteer will present a chapter for the book or part of the chapter. And then if you see here for the meeting schedule, if you'd like to present, you can sign up um, on the cheat sheet for your cohort and it's linked below and pinned in the a club Slack. Um, I'll show that in like a second. And then I guess also how to present. Um, so these are notes. These notes are created with book down and there are some instructions on how to present 
Um, so first you have, make sure you have like GitHub and RStudio. Um, yeah, I don't know how detailed to go into this, um, but yeah, basically there's like some detailed instructions on how to present and how to um, get the book, like get the book onto your RStudio and to make edits to it. Um, and yeah, I guess if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on the Slack. And for our newbies, um, let's see. So yeah, for the pace of it, um, we'll try to cover one chapter a week, but it is okay to split chapters when you feel like it's too much. And we'll try to meet every week, but we'll likely take some breaks for holidays. I know coming up is like Mother's Day and Father's Day in the US and and not sure what else, but yeah. And I guess for me, that's all I have to present. I don't know, Femi, if there's anything else you think I should show? I think uh, you, I was, I was about to say maybe the sign up sheets so that we all know. Okay, so. Which is switch. in the Slack. Yeah, let me switch to the Slack. Okay, yes. Okay, so here is the RPDS Online Learning Community Slack, and this is our book club. And yeah, so you can see on the right hand side, um, yeah, book club data bazaar. If you don't already have it, you can add channels, browse channels. Um, look, yeah, um, but yeah, you should be able to browse the channels. Book club. Uh, oh. I'm doing it wrong. But yeah, basically, if you don't already have it, you can browse the channels and add it. Um, but yeah, so we mentioned as far as volunteering to present here at the top, you'll see pinned at the top, there's a Google Sheets for the um, to sign up to volunteer. Uh, I have to switch my. Okay. Yeah, so Right now, this week is just our first week. We're doing introductions and go over the preface of the book. And again, meet everyone here. Actually, let me give you guys the link for the sign up sheet as well. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, do like introductions to everyone. Um, I guess if we have time, I can start going over chapter one data preparation. Okay. I can start going over chapter one data preparation if we want. And yeah, so right now we have we have volunteers for the or presenters for the first two or three weeks. But if anyone's interested in presenting one of the other chapters, um, feel free to use the link in the chat or um, you can find it on the Slack. Um, you can put your name to present. And then I think also I can go over maybe the a bit more of the book. Okay. Oh, also to note, um, when I was doing my, I when I did chapter one, I realized um, some of the code may be slightly outdated because um, this book was written in twenty twenty, and as someone who's only been coding a year, I didn't realize how much things could change in three years or two years time. So yeah, some of it may be um, a little out of date, um, but yeah. So the preface, um, how to use this book. Um, you don't need to read this book from start to finish in order to start building effective graphs. You can feel free to jump to the section that you need and then explore others that you find interesting. And the graphs, are, the graphs are organized by the number of variables to be plotted, the type of variables to be plotted, and the purpose of the visualization. So for the first chapter, which is data preparation, it'll be providing a quick overview on how, to, how, how you get your data into R and how to prepare it for analyses. Chapter 2, Introduction to ggplot2, provides an overview of the ggplot2 package. Chapter 3, Univariate graphs describes graph for visualizing distribution of single categorical or quantitative 
variables. Chapter four, you have bivariate graphs, and that describes graphs that are just that display the relationship between two variables. Chapter five, multivariable graphs, um, describes graphs that display the relationships among three or more variables. And it's helpful to read chapters three and four before this chapter. Then you have chapter six, which is maps, and it provides a brief introduction to displaying data geographically. Chapter seven is time dependent graphs, and it describes graphs that display change over time. Chapter eight is statistical models, um, and it describes graphs that can help you interpret the results of statistical models. Um, chapter nine discusses other graphs, um, and those, these are graphs that do not fit neatly elsewhere. Um, since yeah, it's basically our miscellaneous graphs chapter. Um, chapter 10 is customizing graphs, and it describes how to customize the look and feel of your graphs. And if you're going to share your graphs with others, it's a good idea to review that chapter. Chapter 11, saving graphs, and it covers how to save your graphs, uh, different formats that are optimized for different purposes. Chapter 12 is interactive graphs, and it provides an introduction to that topic. And then chapter 13, advice and best practices. It gives advice on creating effective graphs um, and where to go to learn more and it's worth a look. So also there's the appendices, which describe each of the data sets used in the book and provides a short blurb about the author and Wesleyan Quantitative Analysis Center. Um, and yeah, again, there's no one right graph for displaying data. Check out the examples and see what type best fits your needs. Um, as for our prerequisites, it's assumed that you have some experience with the R language and that you have already installed R in R Studio. If you haven't, here, here are some resources to get started. Um, I'm not going to put them all in the chat right now unless anyone wants them. Um, and then for the setup, in order to get to create the graphs in this guide, we'll need to install some optional R packages. And to install all of the necessary packages, you can run the following code in the RStudio console. Um, so basically just copy, yeah, copy and paste it into your RStudio console. And alternatively, you can install it, install a given package the first time it is needed. For example, if you execute library gapminder and get the message error in library gapminder, gapminder, there's no package called gapminder you'll know that the package has never been installed and you simply um, execute install.packages gapminder in the console and once and once and then library gapminder will work from that point on. Um, so the next one is chapter one. I'm thinking maybe we can do some introductions first uh, before if we have time going to chapter one. Yes, I think it's okay. Okay, I can put my oh, sorry, I'll put my camera back on. Um, yeah, okay. So, um, my name is Lydia, Lydia Gibson. Um, I've been part of the R for DS online learning community going on two years. Yeah, it'll be two years this summer. Um, I've participated in, this will be my third book club, I guess. I was in the ggplot2, first cohort of the ggplot2 book club um, back in 2021. I'm currently in Mastering Shiny as well, and then this will be my first time um, co-facilitating a book club. Um, I'm a second year master's student studying statistics at Cal State East Bay in Hayward, California, and yeah. It's a bit long. And also, like, I guess participating in the ggplot2 book club made me really like interested in data viz. So I'm really excited to be reading this with all of you. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, sorry, my camera is on because uh, it's late back here in Nigeria. I'm a lower family. Uh, I am the Currently, I'm facilitating the book club for R4DS, R4 Data Science Book Club, Code 7. I'm a current facilitator. I've participated in several book clubs, I think Mastering Shiny, Advanced R, uh, Joe Els, Joe Com R. 
So I am really happy about uh, learning more about this book club. I think presently my work here, I work at IT as a research uh, associate. So I am hoping that this book club, I'm going to learn more skills about uh, data visualization uh, using the R programming language. Thank you. I think I pass over to Ken Fu. Wait, what uh, happened? Ken. Oh no, we're just doing introductions, Ken. I, I kind of lagged a bit, so so just introductions. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, my internet lagged a bit. <laughs> so um I'll just turn on my can you all see? Okay. Um so hi. Um my, my name is uh Ken Vu. So I'm in R4DS since I think it was last year or sometime this year. Um, I'm currently a master's statistics student at uh, California State University East Bay, so same school as Lydia. Um, I'm second year, and I'm pretty new to the whole R for DS thing. And I hope that you know, with this book club, I get to learn more tools and techniques to enhance my database visualization skills, which is kind of an area that I'm interested in. And hope to get to know more and do more of these book clubs moving forward. Yeah. Do I, do I pick, or I guess I can. Robin. Okay. Um, I guess Ryan. Okay. It looks like he, I think he stepped out, but I'll go with uh, Tiffany. Hello. Hi. Um, so my name is Tiffany, um, and are we just uh, saying like who we are, what we do, and um, uh, why we joined this? Sorry. Yeah, just brief introduction. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I am actually currently a transfer MS student um, to NC State University um, starting next fall. And I currently work as a clinical research, or well, clinical research coordinator, clinical trial coordinator at UNC. Um, and I joined this club to um, gain more um, skills and kind of stay in the stay in the loop of um, coding, um, uh, because um, I will need to use it. Actually, after I collect all the data um, for my um, PI, she wants me to analyze the data, also help with that. So um, that will this uh, 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 club will help me stay, you know, um, focused and stay in 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 the coding mindset. <laughs> I would have preferred to have a data analyst position, but um, most of them are now requiring MS for some reason or masters, which is insane. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> but cool. that's me. Yeah. Thanks for joining, Tiffany. And yeah, I kind of like I myself. Tiffany. I was like, I need to do it. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> yeah, because it's just. Yeah, I know both Ken and Tiffany from other groups, so I was like, hey, I'm the guys join. <laughs> but yeah, Ryan, if you there, if you want to do an intro. Otherwise, I can I can always um, start um, chapter one. I don't know, Femi, do you, should we do chapter one today? I think for me it's okay because if you look at some chapters uh, short, I think we need to match some chapter. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I can start with chapter one today. I'll just turn back off my video for now. Um, oh, that didn't show what I thought it would. Oh, okay. Oh, that's the Slack. Okay, that is my R Studio. Okay, can you guys see my R Studio? Oh. Yep. Okay, cool. So yeah, 
So I have the book loaded. Okay, so yeah, I probably could have went through all the steps with how to get the book loaded, but again, if anyone has questions, feel free to DM me on the Slack and I could always walk you through it. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna knit. This is chapter one that I did. Let me knit it. And I might have to switch what is being shared. Let's see. Uh, Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. Can you guys see? Let's just say chapter one data preparation. Yep, we can see it. Okay, cool. Okay, so yeah. So again, this is the first chapter of data visualization with R by Rob. I want to say from Kravikov. Um, so yeah, so chapter one is on data preparation. So our learning and learning objectives are how to import data from external sources, such as text files, Excel spreadsheets, statistical packages, and databases, and learning how to clean data so that is in a useful format prior to visualizing it. So importing for this, um, for this um, section, we'll be using the salaries data set to illustrate that R can import data from many different sources. And like also in our appendix of the book, you can find the data in the same salaries data in other formats, such as that CSV, that TXT, that um, SLS, like the text files or Excel spreadsheet. And the specific data set describes the nine month academic salaries of 297 college professors at a single institution in 2008 through 2009. And again, um, so yeah, again, these, the data set can be found in the appendix. So I mean, I'm just gonna open that really quick. Okay. Yeah, so you can find it in the appendix. Um, so in the book, you scroll all the way to the bottom to the appendix A with the data set. And this is the first data set we'll be looking at, um, academic salaries. And here you have it in the other format. So if you wanna download it, um, download them and test out um, uploading them. Okay. So, Okay, so for text files, the readr package provides functions for importing the limited, um, the limited text files into R. So you do again if it if it wasn't already installed, install that packages readr, and then library readr. And for examples of importing data from comma delimited files, you do um, salaries. And then you you'd assign that like that variable um, using read underscore csv and then the name of the data file, the name of the file inside um, parentheses inside the I feel like I'm not saying that right. But, <laughs> and then if you wanted to do a tab delimited delimited file, you could do read underscore TSV and then and then also for like Excel spreadsheets, you can do read Excel package and it can pour data from Excel workbooks and it does both um dot XLS and um dot XLSX formats are supported. And since workbooks can have more than one worksheet you can specify the one you want with the sheet option and the default is sheet is equal to one. And then there's also like you can also do statistical packages 
where the Haven package provides functions for importing data from a variety of statistical packages, such as Theta, SPSS, and FAST, and then also databases. Um, depending on the database containing the data, the following packages can help. And in the new, newest versions of RStudio, you can use the connections pane to quickly, oh, sorry. quickly access the data stored in database management systems. Okay, so also, so these are actually, I made them so they're actually links. So I'm gonna put the stuff documentation for read R and read Excel in the chat. And then I'll go back to my R studio and show you guys how show you guys um I guess provide an example of reading in the data. Okay. It should be Okay, you can see my R Studio. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, great. Okay. So yeah. So for an example of reading in actually that. Okay. So for an example of reading in data from a comma delimited file, so I did already upload the data. And if you go to files, it's in data. And then so I have the .csv, .txt, and yeah, the other one. So for this, and I just cleared my environment, so it's not there already. But I'm going to run that. Oh, oh, I should probably. Read oh. R. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, okay. Of course, I had to do the library first. But yeah, okay, so read R is already installed, but you have to, um, yeah, you have to run this to open the library for read R. And then for this one, to import the data from a comma delimited file, um, I'm just going to run that code. And it is. I'm not sure everything I'm saying, but yeah. So basically, and you see that the data is now in our environment and you see salaries and here it's pulled up. Yeah, where it has the six, um, yeah, six columns or variables and then it's 397 observations total. But yeah, so same over there. So that's doing it from a CSV file. And then the same with Excel, where, yeah, I'm gonna clear the environment again, just to make sure. Yeah, so then I'll run this. Um, so first we call the library, the read Excel package. And then, yeah, I ran, so I ran this whole thing just now. And so we get the same data set um, in our environment, it's the 397 observations with the six variables. Um, but yeah. And then these should do the same thing as well. I didn't actually try these out, but all the data is there, so it should work. Oh, I have to in the Haven package <laughs> or. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So they all they all work and yeah there's the data so when you guys like I guess download the book you can try it out as well. 
so that is um yeah so that is importing data and then i can go back to the book and show cleaning data unless there are any questions if you guys have any questions feel free to stop me So next we can go to cleaning data. Um, okay, cleaning data. Cleaning data can be the most time consuming part of any data analysis. And two of the quickest and easiest to learn approaches to clean data are using the dplyr and tidyr package. And uh, here you just kind of have like a little table telling you different dplyr verbs such as filter, select, mutate, arrange, and summarize. And also tells you what they do. So for selecting variables, the dplyr select function allows you to limit your data set to specified variables or columns. So you do library dplyr um, data. We'll use the Star Wars data set, which is from the dplyr package. And then if, if you wanted to keep the variable names, um, actually, let me show you the actual data. Well, I'll do that after. So here's like a line of code to keep the variable names, um, names or the variables name, height, and gender, um, where you're assigning to new data, you're um, assigning and selecting the Star Wars data set, and then the name of the three variables you want, which are name, height, and gender. And then, for example, if you wanted to keep the variable name and all variables between, um, between the variables mass and species inclusive. So data, um, so you're assigning it to, you're selecting from the Star Wars database, you want the, um, you want the variable name, and then you want the variables, um, everything in between mass and species, including those, both those variables. And then also if you wanna keep all the variables, except for birth year and gender. Uh, again, if you select from the Star Wars data set and you have the minus, um, the minus before birth year and gender, um, it'd be, so basically it's saying like not, not those variables. Um, yeah, I might, I'll probably run through some of this, run through the slides first and then go back to the R Studio. Um, okay. So then also for selecting observations, um, dplyr filter function allows you to limit your data set to observations or rows that meet a specific criteria. And uh, multiple criteria can be combined with the ampersand or and and the vertical bar or or symbols. And again, we're using the Star Wars data set from dplyr. So for example, if you wanted to select um, the females in the data set, you could filter, do filter from the Star Wars data set, gender equal equal feminine. Yeah, this is one of the, um, so there were a few things from the, um, from the original book that I had to change in the code. I think in the book, it originally had gender equal equal female, but when I looked at the data set, um, I guess they changed it um from saying female male to feminine i guess the other one's masculine uh, but yeah and then so example of selecting females that are from alderan um again filter color data set star wars gender equal equal feminine um ampersand or the and and home world is equal equal to alder alderan yeah and then for creating and recoding variables, the dplyr mutate function allows you to create new variables or transform existing ones. Um, so if you want to convert the height in centimeters to inches and mass in kilograms to pounds, it'd be mutate, calling the data set Star Wars, and you can, the height, um, the height is equal to height time 0.394. So converting centimeters um, 
converting centimeters to inches. And then um, for mass, you want to mutate it so that mass is times 2.205 to convert it from kilograms to pounds. And then also the if, if else function, which is part of base R, can be used for recoding the data. And the format is if else test return if return if false. And for example, if height is greater than 180, then height cat is equal to tall, otherwise height cat is equal to short. And so that one you're mutating Star Wars, height cat, if else the height is greater than 180. Um, so yeah, if it's greater than 180, return tall. And if it's not return, and if it's false, return short. And then set heights greater than 200 or less than 75 to missing. So mutate from the Star Wars data set height, if felt height is less than 75 or height is greater than 200. Um, and you'll set it to NA if true. And if it's false, you um, leave it as the height, the height as is. And then also you have summarizing data. So the dplyr summarize function can be used to um, reduce multiple values down to a single value, such as the mean. So if you want to calculate the mean height and mass, you could do summarize um, from the Star Wars data set, mean height is equal to mean of height, um, na dot um, equals true. So um, na remove is equal to true. And the mean mass, you're um, you're taking the mean of like again, it's the mean of all the all the observations that are in the mass variable. Um, and if there's like if it's NA or like the value isn't there, um, you're removing it. And then you have your new data. And I can go. I guess I can go over this in the R Studio as well after. Um, and then dplyr summarize is often used in conjunction with the group by function to calculate statistics by group. So if you want to calculate the mean height and weight by gender, um, so first you did group by. Um, so take the Star Wars data set and group it by, um, yeah, group it by gender. Um, so you have like the feminine masculine, and then you can summarize. Um, the new data, and again, get the mean, the mean height and mean weight based on the gender. And then also, there's like the pipe, the pipe um, operator. Um, so pack, tidyverse packages like dplyr and tidyr allow you to write code using the pipe operator. And the pipe operator passes the result on the left to the first parameter of the function on the right. So here. Um, so instead of where we saw, like, for example, where we saw like this first line where it's like within group by, you have the data set, um, the data set you want to use, and then the variable you want to group by. So with the pipe operator here, um, well, they didn't do group by first, but here you have the Star Wars data, data set, then you pipe it um, and you filter the gender where you only want like um, where gender is equal to feminine. And then you take that and you pipe it and group it by the species. And then you summarize the mean height for like basically this is gonna be the mean height by all the um, all the feminine I guess characters grouped by their species. So you have like droid, human. I don't know how to pronounce other ones. <laughs> um, but yeah, so calculating the mean height for women by species. And then also you have um, reshaping data. So in the book, they talk about spread and gather, um, but tidyr, tidyr 1.0.0 introduced pivot longer and pivot wider, which replaced the older spread and gather functions. So you'd want to um, open up um, 
opened the library for TidyR. And here I have a table, which is an example of a tidy data set. Um, so it's a table with um, six observations and four variables. Um, so using the pivot wider. Um, so here's an example of, it's the same data. Um, so table two, it's actually the same data, but it's not in like tidy format. So it has 12 rows and four columns. But when you take that and you do pivot wider names names from like the type where our types are like cases and population and values from count and then you get back that same table that six by four with country year cases and population so it should be yeah should be the same as this one and then for a pivot longer I have another data set um, that I show you. So it's table 4A. And this data, I believe it's also from like, I think it's from the TidyR package itself. So again, it's the same data, but not in like tidy format. So it's three rows and three columns where, um, yeah, where the columns are like, oh, the variables are country, the year 1999 and the year 2000. And then we take that and we pivot longer. Oh, it might not be the same data set actually. It's not exactly the same data set. Um, plus it doesn't have population. But yeah, so we pivot longer. Um, ooh, part of that is cut off. Oh, I can scroll. Okay, so pivot longer and for year, okay, names to year. Actually, I'm having, I don't remember how to read this fully. Um, but I guess these are the names um, to year and values to cases. I'll have to look at the help in the help in the RC to understand that one a bit more. But yeah, so basically it took our data set, which was three rows and three columns and gives you a table um, that's six observations by three variables. And then one of the last parts is about missing data. And there are three basic approaches to dealing with missing data, um, feature selection, listwise deletion, and imputation. In feature selection, you delete variables or columns that contain too many missing values. Listwise deletion involves deleting observations or rows that contain missing values on any of the variables of interest. And imputation involves replacing missing values with reasonable guesses about what the values would have been if they had not been missing. And there are several approaches as detailed in such packages, the packages listed. And then one of the last things I have, I have some resources that I added which is a dplyr cheat sheet that I'll put in the chat. Oops. Uh, that didn't work. I'll have to open it <laughs> to put it in the chat. Um, but yeah, there's the dplyr cheat sheet and the tidyr cheat sheet. I'll open them. Okay. And then so those links go specifically to the, they go specifically to the GitHub repo where you can find the cheat sheets. So this is like the um, cheat sheet for dplyr. Um, that'll kind of help explain how to use some of the functions. And then also there's the cheat sheet for um, tidyr, again, kind of telling you how to use it. So I'll put those in the chat. Oops. Okay. Now I guess I can go back to the R Studio. Um and I guess. Oh, that's the wrong one. 
Okay, you guys can see my R Studio, right? Yes. Okay. And then, okay, so we went over data. Okay, so I guess it would be selecting um, the cleaning data section. So we can go over a bit. Okay, so let me do so the Star Wars data set. Oh, I didn't run. Star Wars. Okay, so for the Star Wars data set, so 14 variables and looks like 87 up. Yeah. 87 observations of 14 variables. You have like the name of the character, their height, their mass, hair color, skin color, eye color, birth year, sex, gender, home world, species, and the films they're in. Okay, so yeah, so again, that's 14 variables in total. So then if you want to select the females in the data set, um, again, it'd be a filter in the Star Wars data set. Gender is equal to feminine. And then, yeah. So, so again, the Star Wars data set itself is 87 observations, 14 variables. So let's see this one. When I run this, yeah. So for the new data, the new data variable is now only 17 observations. Of 14 variables. Um, so that's, there's only 17 observations of characters that are feminine. And then this one, it's like the feminine characters that are from Alderaan. And I run this. So for the new data you see in the environment, it's only one one observation, so there's only one character that's feminine and from Alderaan. And then for recreating and recoding variables, um, so this one was where we use, oh yeah, so that one was filter. And this one, um, creating and recoding, that's using the, um, mutate. So here we wanna convert the height in centimeters to inches and masses in kilograms to pounds. I think that one, we were able to see. Oops. Oh. Uh oh, what did they do? New data. Okay, so that one, it shouldn't actually change anything there. But let me see. So for Star Wars itself, yeah. Height and mass. So right now they're in centimeters and kilograms respectively. So I think if we do if we do the new data new data. Yeah, so you should see the new data, the height and mass there it's different numbers. So the height now should be in yeah, height is in inches and mass is in pounds now, I think. Yeah. So if you look um, specifically column column two and three um, from Star Wars to new data, you'll see that the numbers are different because we um, we did a mutate on them. And then there's the if else. Okay. If else. So right now in Star Wars height it shows you a specific number so with this one this this line it should change anyone whose height is greater than 180 to tall and if they're not greater than 180 it should put them as short like for new data so let's run that one and uh i might have to see Okay. Hmm. 
I'm not sure why that didn't work. I don't know, maybe I don't. Hmm. I'm, oh, wait, let me see what that was. Okay, so the second one did work. Okay, where set heights greater than 200, 200 or less than 75 to missing. So yeah, so for Star Wars, right in here, you see oh, like everyone has a height. Um, right now I have it in descending order. So yeah, so like the highest height is like, 264. So if we go to new data and I put it to, okay, descending order. So yes, so now you see it's at 200 is the highest height. And then I think it should have some NAs. Yeah, and then we have a bunch of NAs because these characters, their height was over 200 or less than 75, yeah. And then let's see, calculating the mean height and mass. So this one, you see it did the mean height and mass for all the characters. So it took all the, yeah, all the heights and masses and did a mean for all of them. And then this one put the group by, you can kind of see that one already. I think the only other thing was showing you guys like the tables, what they looked like. Okay, so. Tidy okay, let's see if this one we do table two. Okay, so this is what table two looks like originally, where it's um twelve rows and four um four variables, and then when we do the pivot wider, we get it um six observations by the four variables. And then for example, table four is the three by three where it's the three countries, Afghanistan, Brazil, and China. And then there's like the three variables, the country, year 1999, year 2000. And then this one, when we did the pivot longer, yeah, we get a six by three. Um, I don't know if anyone else has like more experience with pivot longer and wider and if you want to um, say anything about that. Otherwise, I think that's kind of all I have for today. So I'll, I can stop screen sharing. Hey, Lydia, I was just gonna, you can keep your screen up, but I was gonna just make a comment on pivot longer. So <clears throat> I've always thought that a better name for pivot longer would be pivot taller. And so what it does is it takes, you have right there, it says pivot longer. And then, then you name the columns that you want to, the column names that you want to turn into values in a column. So in the original data set, there's, I assume there's a column called 1999 and a column called 2000. Yeah. And so to make it taller, you convert 1999 and 2000 into values in the column called year. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and then pivot wider is just the opposite of that. So you would start with values that are in a column like that and you wanna switch it so that now there's a column called 1999 and a, and a um, column called 2000, so. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I don't know if it helps. It helps me to think about pivot longer as pivot taller instead of pivot longer. So it's in my mind, it's pivot wider and pivot taller. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah.
And thank you for that, Anne. But You're yeah, welcome. so that's all I have for today for chapter one. I guess next week, Sunny, you'll be doing chapter two. Yes. Okay. And yeah, so I guess that we're like really good on time. It's about to be four o'clock here. So almost at the top of the hour. Um, yeah, so thank you all for joining um, the first meeting for the data viz data visualization in our book club for the r for ds online learning community. And again, we'll be meeting weekly at the same time. Um, and yeah, so we'll see you next week and we'll discuss chapter two, which is an introduction to ggplot2. So thank, thank you all. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. you. See Thanks, you Lydia. next week. Thank you. Bye. Bye.